Uh, the next guy, Christian Watson, he had a limited practice on Wednesday, then a DNP on Thursday. Um, you know, hamstrings, you know, he had, he, he had some hamstring issues last year. So, um, kind of his outlook for this week, again, against the tough New Orleans Saints defense. Yeah. So there's a little bit of confusion with Christian Watson because he was limited on, you know, limited last Friday. He was limited again on Wednesday. And then yesterday, Thursday, he was a DNP. He didn't practice. People were a little concerned. There were reports from the beat writers that this was a planned scheduled day to manage his workloads. Want to say chef's kiss. Mm, beautiful. Love the medical staff and how they're managing. They, they, he met his workload limit for that day. They're tracking it objectively. They said, Christian Watson, you're not practicing today. I really love that. Uh, so, you know, they're doing it. I think the, the Packers are doing a good job. He didn't go last week. I think he can go this week. He returned to practice today. Still limited. He did have this issue last year. I understand that for receivers, we talked about running backs before, but for receivers, the weekly recurrence rate on these hamstring strains is, is much higher. You actually see a weekly recurrence rate in wide receivers for hamstrings sitting at right around 30 percent uh, a weekly recurrence rate so that's pretty high here's what i said about re-injury rates in the season-long playbook available in the patreon uh relative to hamstring strains and wide receivers re-injury rate is high and the stud and dud rates are essentially equal with an 18 percent weak winner rate wide receivers off this injury are definition of boom or bust with a slightly higher emphasis on the bust players with these injuries should generally be avoided in trades acquisitions or in season-long leagues especially in the first week back but I mentioned, I'm pretty sure it was here a couple of weeks ago. I need to give him a chance, right? I drafted Christian Watson. I want to give him a chance. I want to see if he can overcome that. I'm going a little bit by feel. Not everything's data. I told myself I'd be a little bit better about going by feel. Given the way that I know that the Packers have managed his current hamstring strain, uh, despite that New Orleans defense, I really want to give uh, Christian Watson a chance because, man, even if he does, well, I don't know, let's say worst case scenario, he gets ruled out again in the second quarter, but he caught a 40-yard bomb. He made up the value. There he is. A guy like Christian Watson, you have him in your lineup for upside. Uh, and quite frankly, I'm not going to tell you to sit him. Just understand that he's a hold, right? I wouldn't necessarily actively want to go out and draft Christian Watson or trade for Christian Watson. But since I drafted him in a handful of places, I want to see how that goes. I want to play that out and I want to I, I want to see what he can do. Yeah, unless you, unless you were able to you hit the waiver wire with somebody, I mean, it's it's hard to replace kind of like what you said, the boomer bus. Maybe he won't have the the all of all of the routes run, but heck, we saw with the Denver Broncos last week, you know, Marvin Mims ran 12 routes, he caught two balls for 113 yards. So Christian Watson has that game breaking ability. So I think he he's someone that can actually uh yeah, like you said, only run, maybe run half the routes of Romeo Dobbs and uh, Jaden Reed and then, but still be explosive and cause he is explosive and we've seen that before. So uh, over to Seattle, uh, DK Metcalf, he had that rib injury that, that, you know, that we saw kind of, you know, that they did in replays a little bit. He was a DMP most recently a level of concern with him miss, possibly missing the game. Yeah, so looking at the data for wide receivers with shoulder, ribs, and chest injuries, you see that 66% of the time since 2018, wide receivers miss no time at all. 18% of the time, they miss one game. So there is about a roughly, right, if we're gonna if we're gonna approximate it, there's about a 20% chance that Metcalf doesn't go. He I haven't seen any updates since they are over on the West Coast or in your time zone. I haven't seen any updates specifically on his practice report. So he last I knew he didn't practice that is something to consider right it's not it's not nothing but when it comes to if he's active should you start him I I do sit in the camp that if he's active you should start him these injuries are not necessarily easy to deal with they're they're kind of a pain tolerance issue um the weekly recurrence rate isn't anywhere nearly as bad as something like a hamstring right it's, it's half of that it's about 16 percent Right. It's a small sample, like, uh, but it is something that you that you have to consider with DK Metcalf. But understanding that, understand that their targets, they don't fall, right? They're 118 percent of their average. So still at 100 percent of, of, of the routes that they're that they typically run when they're healthy, 114 percent of their fantasy points when compared to when they're healthy targets per route run, 113 percent. Right. Nothing really drops. So if DK Metcalf is active, which, again, at this point, there's if we're going to really put numbers to it, there's about an 80% chance he's active as of right now. Uh, I'm starting DK Metcalf. I'm putting him in my lineups and I'm putting him in any, you know, GPPs that I'm, that I'm trotting out there this week.
Yeah, plus the the Carolina Panthers, they're, they're pretty banged up in the secondary right now. They've been very forgiving on on the, in the rushing offense, but yeah, I think there there could be some you know big plays for DK Metcalf if uh, especially if JC Horn sits out another game, which uh, would not be very good for him. Uh, yeah, let's go over to DeAndre Hopkins uh, back to Tennessee. You know, the ankle has been, you know, and he he's a guy, and you talked about this last week. He's not a guy who practices very often, but he had a limited practice yesterday, yeah, yesterday being Thursday. And, uh, you know, he played through it last week. Could we be looking at playing through it and, uh, but, you know, just kind of limiting him? Yeah, again, the practice report is really hard to read on that guy because he doesn't practice as it is. It is notable, though, that he was a full participant on Wednesday, went back down to a limited participant on Thursday. Did he have a setback? We don't really know. Uh, this is what we call you know, an eversion or high ankle sprain type mechanism that he sustained in week one. Uh, what you need to know is that in week one, he ran a route on 85% of team dropbacks. Uh, and then in week two, it was just 76%. So there is a bit of a difference there. Uh, he was obviously, he was clearly limited. I mean, he did make a couple of big time catches in, you know, when they needed him to, but he ultimately didn't really deliver from a fantasy perspective. Uh, I actually, let me correct myself. In week two, he actually only ran around on 65% of the team's dropbacks. And compared to week one, that was at 76% or 86%. Sorry. I really just jumbled all the numbers there. All you need to know is DeAndre Hopkins ran a lot fewer routes in week one relative to week two. I don't think that he's back to 100%. I also don't think he's necessarily a must start. I think he he's going to be, you know, it's going to be really difficult. It's going to be a difficult run out for me to, to, to throw DeAndre Hopkins out there unless I really have to. I'm not saying don't, right? I'm not saying sit him, but, you know, he's, he's kind of a coin flip. If you want to sit him, I wouldn't necessarily blame you. And it is a tough defense. The Cleveland Browns have been one of the best defenses. They've got a great secondary, great pass rush. So that one, you know, going up against them, that's, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you that if you can sit him, uh, I mean, if you have like a Michael Thomas or something like that, that's definitely someone to consider to play instead of, uh, in, instead of um, DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, yeah, don't, don't go like grabbing, you know, someone off the waiver wire to get, you know, uh, I don't know if I'm playing Josh Reynolds instead of him. So that, that, that's a little too local for me. Um, well, somebody who's gone local, Puka Nakua. Yeah. I mean, he's gone local the first two weeks, but, um, again, you know, coming up with an oblique, he got, he had a DNP, uh, he played through it, had a phenomenal game against the 49ers last week. Now he's got the Bengals on Monday night football where he's got an extra day. So, could could we be looking more encourage more encouraging for for him to have another uh you know be back on the field yeah so this is a situation where we really want to monitor his practice status and we have again have not seen what's going on uh in la quite yet he didn't practice yesterday like you mentioned but this wasn't an issue uh it wasn't an issue earlier you know in week two and so i don't necessarily anticipate it being an issue uh, again in week three it's just something that they're probably just trying to manage because i mean let's be honest like the rams are banged up right now obviously they just got rid of cam Akers. um they want to keep matthew stafford upright i mean this situation is just <laughs> in la is it's been quite incredible how they've managed it but yeah uh, i'm not necessarily concerned with, with puka i do anticipate that he he'll practice today at least i think that's the hope uh, check the Patreon as the weekend goes on there. They're obviously it's going to be a, a, something to monitor throughout the week for them. But yeah, for now, I'm not too concerned on Puka Nakua. Yeah, I, I think I think there's been so much good, uh, good feeling from among, among the Rams, especially with him kind of coming back. I mean, even <clears throat> even Sean McVay was talking about not him not really needing to you know practice every day to be able to play but again he does have that extra game with this that extra day with this being monday night football so um yeah i mean I, until he doesn't play until uh, until he's ruled until he's ruled out which i don't I, I agree with you you know i'm 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 following i'm following your orders on this one so uh 